Good morning, everybody. This is Patrick Lee. It's time for Midweek Motivation Live. We're going to be talking about adversity, trials, troubles, and pain today. And is there a blessing wrapped up in that? This is Midweek Motivation, not Midweek Discouragement. So we're going to talk about some of these things that get us down. Is there a blessing wrapped up inside of that? Let's get into it today on Midweek Motivation Live right after this. I think I was just told I have a fat head. I'm not sure. I have a, <laughs> I have a brain full of information. And that's a wonderful, wonderful way to look at life um, today. Uh, sitting here in the studio and, uh, and having a chat before the show. I love it. I absolutely, absolutely love it. And yeah, the, the, the show today... Uh, for those of you already tuning in live locally and around the world, the Midweek Motivation Live, now on all major podcast platforms, um, is going to be uh, the, the blessing of trials and troubles. Is there a blessing wrapped up in the middle of pain and the troubles and the, the things that we go through? And we'll, we'll want to talk about that today. Um, I got an update on uh, an email from Apple iTunes yesterday and Apple podcast and opened up the page and it was talking about some downloads. And I just, it says, yeah, search your page here, look at your analytics and just typed in midweek motivation. And I was right in the middle at the top of the page in the first row. And I was like, Hey, there we are. I love that. So it's, it's always great when I go to the different websites that we, we migrate the show out to and find out where we are. So, um, yes. So today talking about, um, the blessing wrapped up in pain and some I've talked to a lot of people lately. Um, it's all over the, the, uh, the airwaves, the podcast, the books that are coming out. And I'm going to be referring back to one of my great books from the past storms of perfection. As we talk through some of this today. Um, so the topic has been around a long time and I have shared um, Ed Milet's um, take on this in the past as well, that everything in life happens for you, not to you. And that's not really, I mean, that's a, an underlying factor of what we're talking about today, but I want to be talking to you about adversity, uh, troubles, trials, and pain, adversity, things that come up to you that are like adversarial people that come against you, people that say things potentially about you. And uh, how do we handle those things? When we go through troubles, and things start happening in life that we don't like. How do we deal with that? The trials, the, when we feel like we are being tested, we're going through some things. Um, I was on the phone yesterday having some coaching calls, talking with, with multiple real estate agents, uh, working through some trials that we are having. And I, I realized a blessing. I found a blessing in that. And I hope this is going to gonna relate to some of you today and help you as well get through the rest of this week and have a new perspective on how to move forward and in, in dealing with things. And then also pain. And that pain can be physical pain. It can be, you know, I have uh, people that I watch um, their show, their podcasts, their YouTube channels, and then also friends, personal friends of mine that have lost a limb, people that deal with chronic pain, with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, many different disorders and maladies that have set themselves on their, their bodies and how do they deal with that pain as well. Um, and how do we develop a mindset, you know, against these or develop a mindset that will help us deal with that. And that's kind of kind of what I want to talk about. Hey, Cody, good to see you watching. Marlene watching the show today. Love it. This is awesome. Um, always love it when people are, are watching live and uh, commenting on the show. Um, what do you do when life happens? And that's what really what this gets down to. What do you do when life happens? Because life happens to everyone. 
life happens for everyone. I'll get my big head out of the camera here. Uh, life happens for everyone, but as these things in life come against us, what do we do? Um, I was reading this story, uh, referring back to my book, Storms of Perfection. One of the stories and some of the insights I got from some of this as I read through these things. This book was put together years ago by, and it has letters written by many celebrities, movie stars, professional athletes, and it's their own words. In their own words, they wrote letters into the author about troubles that they went through in life and how they dealt with that, and it catapulted them forward to the successes that they have experienced. And I have in the sales business, we we say a lot that facts tell, but stories sell. And it's not to sell you a product, but this these stories are there to sell you on the fact that you can be an overcomer. That if someone else has experienced this and you can you can hear their story, maybe you can get the nugget wrapped up in that and learn a way to move forward. Um, hello, Haley. <laughs> Miss Haley, thank you for watching the show. Love you. That is awesome. Also, people watching. Um, I always look at the 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 ticker up in the corner of the, the show um, on my screen and it tells me how many people are watching. And I have to try to not look at that because it goes up and down during the show and it changes my momentum sometimes. I always love it when I start watching that number go up. That's very cool. But as I watch these or read these stories in these books and listen to these podcasts, I'm consistently looking for kernels of wisdom or ways to move forward and understand um, if they've been through it, I can get through it too. And I've been through a lot. Cody's been through a lot. Marlene's been through a lot. Haley, you've been through a lot in your life. People, everyone watching the show has been through a lot um, in their life. And part of the, the secret of that is, is wrapped up in what I just said. You have been through a lot. And the, the blessing wrapped up in that is that you have made it through. You have, you have gone through the things you have gone through and you are still here. The things that have happened to you have not taken you out so far, right? And the 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 um, the goal we have is for you to continue to get stronger, to continue to be able to endure when these things continue to come to us. And as long as we live on this earth, we will face adversity, troubles, and trials, and pain, right? All of us will. I don't know that there's anyone on the planet that is exempt from experiencing those things. All of the money in the world that you can um, earn um, cannot buy you out of adversity, troubles, trials, and pain. All of the companies that you can start, the healers that you can go to, the yoga chants that you can do, the prayers that you can pray will not remove all of these things from your life indefinitely till the end of your days here on the planet. You know what I mean? It just can't. Um, so does prayer work? Absolutely. Does Do breathing exercises work? Absolutely. I think that um, meditation that many faiths and religions teach, prayer and meditation. Christianity teaches prayer in your, your prayers and meditations. And your meditations are simply your utterings, your mutterings, your thought processes as you focus them on things that you need to attain, achieve, or acquire in your life, your prayers and meditations. Your praying is your speaking to your creator. You are asking for him um, to give you peace, to give you blessing in your life. You are thanking him for the things that you have already attained, achieved, the blessings he has already given you, and asking him to continue to watch over you, to pour down blessing upon you, to help you deal with the adversities that come in life, and for him to be with you. But then the other half of that that many people forget about is the meditation 
part. And I'm not talking about just getting into a yoga trance and, 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 and something along those lines. However, if you practice yoga, I know I have been to um, yoga. I did yoga for a short while and did hot yoga for a hot minute. And uh, hot yoga was not for me. And the, the, the benefits behind yoga are amazing. The stretching, the poses, they actually cause incredible things to happen in your body. And over time, it was one of the things that was not for me. And as, and I'm not, I'm not knocking yoga. And if you're a, a yoga practitioner, good for you. Um, you'll be flexible, limber, and have a long, healthy life, I, I believe, and hope for you. Um, there are just a lot of other things wrapped up in that. You know what I mean? Jordan says, prepping to teach, lection, divina, divine reading tonight. One step in this process is meditation. Well, there you go. How are we on the same page, brother? That's awesome. L love that. Um, so many people forget the meditation side, prayers and meditations. What are you thinking about? What are you in your mind giving thanks for? What are you seeking to happen? When these things happen, what do you do when life happens? Uh, yeah, Cody ex ex shared some things with me this weekend that recently happened in his industry. Things have happened in his life. I, I love that. Cody's a, a dear friend and we share a lot because we've, we're going through life together, right? And what do you do? Do you get bitter? Do you get angry? Do you get down in the mouth and start bad mouthing people? start magnifying the problem and how unfair life is. And I can't believe this has happened to me again. Um, or do we take a step back, look at the situation and meditate, talk out, seek counsel and find a way through? Because the secret, the goal is coming out on the other side of that trial, that adversity, right? We want to make it through. We don't want to stay and sit in that misery, in the problem. I read a book years ago. Um, many of you may have read this if you're in sales or leadership called The One Minute Manager. And I don't remember the, the author right off the top of my head, but it turned into The One Minute Manager books for many different topics. The One Minute restaurant owner, the one minute sales manager, the one minute, whatever. And it was all about identifying a problem immediately, quickly, and then within one minute, rectifying the problem with the person creating the problem. And it was either a one minute, a blessing or a one minute correction. And when something good happened, you immediately identify it. And you go and bless that person. You encourage the good behavior. And if it's bad behavior, you don't let it sit and fester you address it head on quickly and you go take care of that. You file the correction or speak the correction to the person that caused that and you get it rectified within a minute. And then you go back to business. You go back to relationship. You go back to doing what you are doing, focusing the ship in the right direction. It's a course correction and it needs to be done quickly. So what do you do when these things happen? Are we going to allow ourselves to sit and um, and wallow in the thought process that they are doing this to me? Or are we going to pick ourselves up and actually say to ourselves, what is the lesson I am learning as I go through this? Has this um, adversity, has this come to me to teach me a lesson? And it is it something that we believe the creator is doing to us, um, in my opinion, absolutely not. We all know who the father of lies is and the great enemy of our soul is. And that is not our heavenly father, not our creator. And he is not up there sitting on his throne, um, throwing things down at you just to see how tough he can make you. But as we go through these things, the thing we are doing is building resiliency. What is the lesson I'm learning as I go through this? Am I learning how to be more patient with my family? Am I learning how to be more patient, kind, or understanding 
to that one family member or person I have relationship that is very trying to me that we do not gel. We are like oil and water and we just don't mix, but we are in a relationship that we work together, we live together or something we are doing. We have a common goal together and we have to learn how to get along and flow and stay. And we get back into, we can talk about vibration, getting on the right frequency, quantum field, all of those things. Believe I believe what you want. I believe those were all created by our Heavenly Father God. Um, but for us to move together in unity, in unison, the way our, we are created to, we have got to learn how to not allow these adversities, these troubles and trials um, to be internalized into our being and, and let that fester like an open wound or a, a, a deep sore um, or, a, you know, a knife to the back. It feels like they stabbed me in the back or I've done everything for them and they've done this to hurt me. Um, we also have the other side of that, which is the pain side. We're dealing with physical maladies in our body, sickness and disease, chronic pain, fatigue, stress, um, talked in the previous show about uh, mental issues as well. Uh, mental health, very, very important part of this that we're talking about today. PTSD, depression, anxiety. What is the lesson I'm learning as I go through these kind of things? Am I being taught something because I feel pain in my body? And maybe I am being taught endurance. I'm being taught that my pain threshold is a lot higher than I thought it was. And it is getting higher as I get older. Um, and as I withstand more pain in my body, I'm learning that I can withstand more pain in my body and still move forward in victory in other areas of life while I learn to, to deal with what's going on in my body. I watched a comedian um, last night on America's Got Talent and he's handicapped on one side of his body and the other side is fairly normal, but he can't talk correctly because of the physical um, handicaps that he has. And he used a voice translator and he came out, he limped out onto the stage and people were wondering what he was going to do. And he uses a voice speaker box and he can just type sentences in it. And he says, I'm a comedian. And he starts telling jokes and they all go along with or touch upon the physical imperfections in, in his body and the Karens out there that tell him he doesn't have the right to speak the way he does about about people with conditions like his. And he's like, have you seen me? It's just it was hilarious that this man with all of these imperfections, we would say in his body has an amazing mindset. He had a great sense of humor and an incredible intellect to turn all of this into a humorous bit that wowed the judges and entertained the audience. And I'm sure this man, just like many others that we have seen over the last couple of years, have gone on these shows, they've been discovered, and they have these physical handicaps that you and I would say puts us on the disabled list. And I'm going to get a check from the government moving forward, and they're going to pay me to live in my misery for the rest of my life. Is that how you want to live? I don't. I don't think any of you watching the show today want to live that way, right? You and I all know people that do, but I don't want to be one of them. The Bible says the poor will be with you forever, but I don't want to be one. It's okay. I'm not mad at you if you don't make as much money at me uh, as, as I do. I'm not mad at you if you make more money than me. I'm, I'm chasing the blessing, which is great, but I'm praying and meditating on it for my heavenly father to bless me and my efforts, but I'm not going to sit back and wallow in failure. If I'm not achieving the things that I want to achieve as fast as I think I should, where is the sense in that? I don't, I don't think there is any. And I think that's a, a very um, misaligned thought process for, for people to think that I ha have a right to wallow in my misery <clears throat> and for everyone else to pay to support me. When I have the ability to find the blessing, the promise, 
wrapped up inside what I'm going through that's going to help me come out the other side and become a successful person in life. This story I was reading uh, that I'm just going to touch on briefly was one of Jimmy Dean. And many of you don't remember that who Jimmy Dean was an actor. Uh, he was a recording star. He, he <coughs> wrote Big Bad John, which was a multi-million dollar country hit years ago. Then he went on to act in many movies, was in a James Bond movie and a lot of different movies, comedies and action movies, um, mystery and intrigue. And then he started Jimmy Dean Sausage. So most of you who have heard of Jimmy Dean know Jimmy Dean by Jimmy Dean Sausage and you've had it for breakfast for years and years. But he grew up just about an hour and a half away from Amarillo right here in the panhandle of Texas um, in Hale Center, Hale County. Texas, and they have a big water tower down there with Jimmy Dean's name on it over the town. Pretty, pretty famous guy, um, president of Jimmy Dean Meat Company. And I'm going to read you a little, just an excerpt of the letter that he wrote. And this was written over 30 years ago. Um, he says many, he grew up there and his dad never made much money, never made more than $10,000 in any given year in his life. But Given that small amount of money he made as a farmer, he had the neatest, cleanest farm. He had the straightest rows. He had the cleanest end rows, the straightest fences on his farm, the neatest barn, the cleanest house, raised nine kids, had a great relationship and a great relationship with God and, raised, and taught that, handed that down to all of his kids, which was one of the most important lessons that he could have done. Um, many looked at Jimmy Dean and say he's the luckiest blankety blank that ever lived. But if that's true, he hasn't, he has had much good future fortune, but things were not and are not always easy. I probably had almost as many rejections in my life as anyone else, more rejections than acceptances. But I ascertained or thought that if it were not for the rough roads, you would never appreciate the smooth roads. So many of you know this in West Texas, Oklahoma, all across the South, you can sometimes determine what state you're in by the roads you're driving on or what town or county you're in based on the roads you're driving on. And you never appreciate a smooth road till you've driven down a rough one. Can I get an amen? We have plenty of rough ones down here. Uh, he goes on to say, being knocked down is part of life. Getting up is also part of life. And you have to determine which person you're going to be. Are you going to stay down or get back up? A people who cannot withstand the bludgeonings of temporary setback and bounce back, I have very little use for. Pretty strong statement, right? But he's used that statement to become the measuring stick for who he allows to speak into his life, who he allows to help um, chart the courses that he was going forward with as he was achieving the successes he was. Being able to handle setbacks... Notice I didn't say defeat. The word defeat is not in my vocabulary and never will be. Um, the people that learn are, are able to handle temporary setbacks. They overcome them and stand tall. And that is what entitles you to the sweet bows of victory and success. Unfortunately, in this wonderful country, we've created an element that condones giving up. In my opinion, when our great president FDR decided it was proper that we compensate people for non-productivity, that was one of the gravest mistakes that ever happened. The Bible says you'll earn your bread by the sweat of your brow as it should be. I have no use for people who can help themselves and move forward and do not. Uh, I once told my youngest son, Robert, that I was a self-made man. And he said, that's what I like about you, dad. You just take the blame for everything. How does that resonate with you? His mindset was, if it's to be, it's up to me. If someone is going to handle um, adversity, pain, trials and troubles, it's going to be me. I'm going to take it upon myself and I'm going to make it through and I'm going to create a better future for those in my sphere, those that I know, love and trust. What is the lesson I'm learning as I go through this? I'm growing. I'm getting stronger. I can handle more pain. 
I become a bigger person, much more magnanimous inside. I become a bigger giver, a bigger donator to charities, to my church, to those less fortunate me uh, than me. And I can say, these are the things I've been through and maybe I can help you through too. I believe in life that we are given two hands for a reason. Sometimes that hand needs to reach up and allow someone to help you up. And the other hand needs to reach down and help the next person up. Remember, as we go through these troubles and tri trials, we are building resiliency, steadfastness, resolve, and peace. And those are the things that I try to live my life by. Um, and sometimes I am tempted to uh, ask the Lord why I go through so many things that I do. And sometimes I am accused of things that I think are unfair. Sometimes I experience pain in my body and family members experience, experience pain in their body and we wonder why. But at the end of the day, these are the things that I find are the blessings wrapped up in my problems and my pain. I become much more resilient, able to bounce back, able to stretch when things are tough. I develop a steadfastness, a resolve that this is how I'm going to live my life and the things that I'm going to commit myself to. And then I am given the peace to know that I can withstand much more than I could before. Hey guys, I hope this has helped you today. There is a blessing wrapped up in your problems and your pain, and these are them. I hope they help you. I hope you develop the resolve, the courage to move forward in the face of adversity and realize that life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. And as we make it through and come out on the other side of these things, these are some of the blessings that you can expect. I believe that when you have these victories, when you have come through the trials in your life, that you can look back and realize that these are places in the Bible, they would build an altar to something. When a blessing came, when they spoke to God, when God gave them a victory, they would build an altar. And I'm not telling you to build an altar to yourself, but I'm telling you, when you come through these things, you wear them like a badge of honor. You kind of build an altar, not to yourself, but to the point to where God brought you through this and was your strength and your, your companion, your mentor, your spiritual guide. Um, God helped you through that. And that's a place you can look back and remember. Um, when this trouble hit me, I did not fall. I may have gotten knocked down, but I got up. When this pain attacked my body, I made it through and it made me stronger. When these people said these bad things about me or they left my life, how did I handle that? Did I immediately replace them with someone else even more needy? Or did I realize that my sphere needed to tighten up anyway and I'm a better person because of the experience? Those are all of the blessings wrapped up in these problems. I hope this has helped you today. This has been Patrick Lee with Midweek Motivation Live. If any of you are interested in reaching out to me for help buying a home, selling a home, or investing in real estate, that's what allows me to continue to do all of these things for you. I would love to help you through that process. You can reach out to me at the link to my digital business card in the comments below this video on whichever social media platform you are watching www.patricklee.work and you will be able to reach out to me. Get an appointment in my calendar. I'd love to help you. If you're experiencing problems with pain in your life, as many of you know, you can reach out to me. I am a late night chatter and we can talk and hopefully I can help you talk with you, pray with you and help you through your problems as well. Until next time, remember, there's always a bonus tip at the end of the show. Today, have joy in the middle of the trial. And that will be the secret to how you make it through. Courage begins at the end of your comfort zone. Let's go out there today and get uncomfortable, people. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.